So let's continue solving examples of particles moving inside rigid boxes. Let's suppose we have an electron that is trapped inside an infinitely deep square potential well, our rigid box, that has a width of 0.2 nanometers. So in part A, we want to calculate the zero point energy of our electron. In part B, we want to find the quantity of energy that is released when the electron jumps from quantum number n equals 3 to quantum number n equals 1. And in part C, assuming that the energy released in part B is released in the form of a photon of light, we want to find the wavelength of that photon of light. So let's begin with part A. So in part A we want to find something known as the zero point energy. The zero point energy is simply the lowest possible amount of energy that the electron can have. Now, generally speaking, the energy of our electron trapped inside a rigid box is given by this equation. So n squared multiplied by h squared divided by 8 ml squared, where l is the width of our rigid box, m is the mass of that particle, h is Planck's constant, and n is the quantum number. Now, the zero point energy represents a quantum number of n equals 1. So if we plug in n equals 1, we get h squared, so Planck's constant squared divided by 8 multiplied by the mass of the electron in kilograms multiplied by the width squared given in meters. And that gives us an energy value of about 1.51 times 10 to negative 18 joules. So now we want to move on to part B. So basically in part B we begin with an electron in quantum number n equals 3 and then that electron jumps to quantum number n equals 1 and a certain quantity of energy is released. We want to calculate what that quantity of energy that is released is. So let's look at the following graph. So we basically have the following infinitely deep square potential well, our rigid box. And our electron is basically moving along the following width of the bottom of our rigid box. Now the y-axis represents our energy. Notice n equals 1 is the energy of our particle when the quantum number is n equals 1. That represents the zero point energy. So the next discrete quantity of energy is n equals 2. That is equal to E2 and finally n equals 3 is given by E3. So our electron begins here, jumps down to here, and a certain quantity of energy is released as a result of that transition. So if we calculate what E3 is, then we could take the difference and that will give us our answer. So let's begin by calculating E3. So E3 is equal to n squared multiplied by this quantity and this quantity is simply equal to E1. So 3 squared, which is 9, multiplied by E1, that gives us about 1.36 times 10 to negative 17 joules. So, now we know what this is, and we know what E1 is. To find this difference, we simply subtract. So change in E is equal to E3 minus E1. So basically this quantity minus this quantity gives us about 1.21 times 10 to negative 17 joules of energy is released when that electron transitions from n equals 3 to n equals 1 quantum number. Finally, let's move on to part C. So the energy in part B is released in the form of a photon of light. We want to find the wavelength length of that single photon. So recall that our energy that is stored within that photon is equal to h multiplied by c divided by lambda, where our h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light in a vacuum, and lambda is the wavelength of light, so lambda is what we're looking for. So if we solve for lambda, the wavelength is equal to hc divided by delta e, where delta e is this quantity found in part b. So if we plug 
Wigner two constants and we use this energy value, we find that the wavelength of our photon of light is equal to about 1.64 times 10 to the negative 8 meters.